Uh, I guess this video is going out on uh, Halloween, isn't it? Uh, Sunday, October the 31st. Uh, it doesn't really have anything to do with Halloween. It's not a Halloween related video. But uh, this is something that I... This is something I thought of because I've been dealing with a lot of my... Uh, Reading a lot in a lot of uh, radio repairs, I've been dealing with power issues, and I thought of something to check for, just uh, for extra, all, just for uh, extra safety and to check for power shorts, and then it's to make a dim ball current limiter, and so I thought I'd go over uh, how I'm going to make this. Of course, um, if you don't have the materials. To do so, you're going to have to run to your local hardware store uh, that supplies the materials uh, to make this. But what I got here is a couple junction boxes. And I'll explain uh, the reason I got the uh, junction boxes to make that, to throw the soldering iron off the table. The reason I got the uh, junction boxes is to make this look a little nicer rather than just having wires hanging out and electrical tape. And it's less of a shock hazard if I can figure out how to get the switch and outlet in here and I'll show you why. Uh, this is a thin bulb current limiter I saw on Shingo. I've seen a lot of a lot of repair servicemen use these, but this one in particular I saw on uh, Shingo 066. He had a viewer uh, slash friend I think that made it for him. Made one for him and he had a the outlet, of course, in a junction box, and it had a switch beside it for by for current bypass. And I thought of making the same thing, and it makes it look a little nicer too. And it's handy to have the bypass. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can. I don't know if I'll be able to mount. I don't know if I'm going to be able to mount this in here properly, but we'll find out. You can see I, these screws are right up against. The side here, and I don't want to have to touch it and shock the hell out of myself every time I grab it. So maybe I'll have to. I don't know about there, maybe. I didn't need to get one with the ground, but that's what was there at my local home, home hardware. And uh, this I couldn't find. Well, they had them there, but they didn't have. They had. They were weird. I don't know how to explain it. This one I got at my local Rona, not home hardware. I stopped at another hardware store on the way back home because I couldn't find one of these junction boxes at my home hardware, local home hardware, so I went to Rona. And then, of course, you're going to need a power cord. I just bought an extension cord, household extension cord. I could chop the end, up, chop the end off of it. If you're not plugging it into an isolation transformer, then you'll need a uh, polarized cord. If you're plugging it into an isolated transformer, it doesn't matter. You can use a non-polarized uh, cord like this one. So, um, and then of course we're going to need a light socket. That's what I got this for, so the light socket will just sit, sit on there. To get around one, I thought of it, but it's not necessary. Just do it like that. So the price and total total for all this, if I did my math right, was thirty-three dollars minus the sponges and scrubbers I got for the kitchen. Uh, but uh, thirty-three dollars, eight thirty-three dollars. Uh, of course, it's cheaper if you don't want to make it look pretty, all pretty. You don't need the junction boxes and, and everything. But uh, so, minus this, of course, because I already had this in the basement. But uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and use this one. And, uh, because it has the, uh, pull switch. But, um, uh, let's go ahead and start putting this together here. Alright, so, I got the, uh, junction boxes together. And I had to run back to the hardware store. I guess I can take my mask off. What? Why in the hell? So I ran back. I got a steel one so it doesn't break this time. The plastic one I had broke. I tightened the screw too tight and it busted. In half. So. That's great. So. And it's more rugged with the steel one. I should have bought a steel one in the first place. 
Just in case it gets dropped or something. I mean, this might break, but I don't think it will. And I think I got that on properly. The chain thing. I don't need it untied. I can just... So, uh... And in case that becomes a, in case this becomes a nuisance, I do have this one without the chain. But uh, let's get started. Let's get everything connected here. I gotta open up. Uh, so let's uh, start building. It. So now that we got everything, and I'm not gonna break anything now. Let's. Uh, Start building. We need. Uh, well, we got this together. And the main, the main uh, ideas of this. The main idea of this is for our current to hit the light bulb before it does our outlet. And the switch is just there to bypass the current. So, uh, let me get out a second here. So let me. do this because I'm just going to chop the end off of this and I might end up using some of the wire inside of this. I got some other primary wire. I don't know why the hell but I couldn't find any primary wire anywhere. The only thing I got here is green primary wire which will work just fine. Okay so the first part here is done. I got the, I marked with the pen, with the uh, marker which side was the hot side and which one was the cold. or which one was neutral and which one was hot. So that's the hot side and that's the neutral. And the way you can tell that is of course the big side here of the plug. This is a polarized plug. The big side is the hot side. This side is the neutral. With a non-polarized plug like this uh, you can see they're both the same size it doesn't so it doesn't matter. You can wire it in either way. But with this side, that's the hot side, and that's the neutral. So the side that's hot with the big side, uh, mark it with any color, like a red red felt or any color felt, or put some sort of melt marking on it, like paint, like uh, paint felt or whatever, on there, so you know what side is which. Uh, so. That's good to go. I can uh, place this down on here. Okay, so I just cut a piece of our primary wire here. Okay, continuing on with our light bulb current limiter. Uh, so we got the switch connected in series with our outlet. So the hot side of our outlet connects to the cold side of our switch and then the hot side of our switch connects to the hot side of the light bulb socket and then the uh, cold side of the light bulb socket connects to the cold side of our outlet so um, let's start by I'm ready to install uh, the outlet and the switch into our junction box. Alright, so there's the uh, cover on the outlet. And it looks a little, it doesn't matter. I got it to fit as best I could. So, uh, yeah. So this side is done. Now we just gotta hook up our light socket. And, yeah. So let's, uh, this radio draws, uh, it says about 55 watts and 320 volts, that's because it's a German radio. It's a European style radio, so I don't know. That's, uh, let's put a 100 watt bulb in here. And I got these other halogen ones they got today that uses, they use 72 watts, but it's a 100 watt replacement. So here's a 100 watt bulb. It's a, yes, it's a soft white.
See if you can see the dim bulb. Power on here. Lights out. Not really. Band in my yeah, I want to start there. Can't tell what end of the band I'm on. The repetition of the Edict of Nantes, one of the greatest crimes in the history of modern times, which led to the Okay, we're gonna attempt to uh, sort of rewire this because I you know, I start yapping and I don't pay attention to the diagram. I was using the wrong diagram. The diagram I was using, at least I think I did. So, but that's fine. That's what we do. What we do here on this channel is, is experimental. Uh, so, you know, we just experiment. We make a mistake, we go back, we try something new. And see if that works. That's what this channel is. That's why I made this channel. I didn't make this channel as like a tutorial channel. I made this channel so that we could, I can make share videos and we can kind of learn together. So, and I, the reason I'm saying that, saying that is I know I'm going to get people that are uh, going to be like, oh, are you doing this wrong? Are you using that? Why did you use this plate? I know I got the wrong plate in the wrong junction box, but whatever. Okay, I got the radio on. I don't know how well you can see that. It's on the dim bulb tester. I rewired the circuit, and so when I power on the radio through it, I do get a bulb to light up dimly. You can see the filament there. That orange stripe you're looking there in the camera is the filament. On set of lights. There you go. You can see it's orange there. It's there. Try a different bulb. Oh yeah. So what the what what is the so this turns the tester on and off. Let's off. Let's on. And if I were to plug in a radio with a shorter power supply, I'd get a really bright light. So let's see. Let's plug in the one that I said I have shorter power supply. Let's see what it does. See, this one has a short power supply, and the reason the bulb is flickering is because the rectifier, the filament in the rectifier is flickering. But there we go. Uh, the bypass thing doesn't work. It, that this just turns it on and off. But uh, no, that's good enough. So that's a radio. This radio has a shorter power supply. Something shorter than the power supply. And this is the Nord Mende Fidelio. So there you have it, your dim bulb tester, 
give up the meaning of simple words let me try uh, looking up my Philco predict let me try plugging in my Philco predictor TV and see if that has a power supply if it has issues with that I get no raster on it I get no sound so no picture no sound so I would like to know since I'm curious now and this shuts off everything so does taking out the light bulb or pulling the chain I pull the chain it shuts off everything. So, and I'll put the diagram in this video. Uh, right here, the picture here, the one I used. Alright, trying, all right, trying to get a wide shot. So, kicking the camera, I'm trying to get a wide shot here. I don't have very much time on the battery, so this is kind of where I'm going to end the video. Uh, so, I the thin ball tester. Well, it's not plugged in. Now it's plugged in. Power the predictor on, and right away, we got a shorted power supply. Imagine that. Huh. Well, actually, I moved it up because this is a. Uh, vacuum tube, black and white television, so it'll pull a little bit more current. Of course, the color tube TV would pull a little bit more current. Uh, so there's nothing really shorter than the power supply, I guess, because the bulb is not fully lit up. I know it looks like it on camera, but it's dimmer than um, what it looks like on camera. But uh, it's not letting me. In adjust the focus of the battery's almost dead. But uh yeah that's this video. Uh more to come. Uh like and subscribe. I guess I gotta put those plugs in right because that's what everyone does on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Make sure you annihilate that like button. Is that isn't that what everyone says? I don't know why everyone goes on about likes. They don't mean anything. It just means how many people liked your video to how many disliked it which nobody really gives a shit about, at least I don't. Uh, you can dislike it, like it, whatever the hell you want to do. Leave a rude-ass comment, leave a nice comment, whatever you want to do. I don't care on this channel. Uh, until next time, 73s, enjoy your radio, doesn't matter what kind of... or enjoy your electronics in general, I guess. And, uh, yeah, 73s. Okay, so here's the, uh, Zenith Color, uh, TV. CRT TV that I watch, it's like a what, 10, 11 inch TV that I watch here in my bedroom. Kind of got this propped up on my bed here. Uh, this TV draws 63 watts, uh, 63, 64 watts, somewhere in there. Uh, so, it, and it's, of course, it's a color TV, so it draws a little bit more current. Uh, it, it doesn't, it's not a color tube TV, so it doesn't draw that much current, but. Tell the color is a little bit. Yeah, the color and everything looks a bit dimmer. And you know, using electronics on something like this, even when there's nothing wrong, it, you know, it keeps it protected too. Not that you would all the time, but like when you're working on it, it's always good to have it plugged into something like this because it keeps. Whatever you're working on, protect it as well as yourself when you're working on the high voltage. You know, the black looks a bit, a lot darker because, of course, the current's being limited. Of course, it always helps to have, of course, you always want a higher wattage bulb because a higher wattage bulb always has a higher resistance. So here's with the, here's the, uh, Portable, portable Marconi tube TV with a uh, 300 watt bulb. It doesn't limit as much current, of course, because the higher wattage per bulb, the higher wattage bulb, the higher the resistance. And yeah, the vertical's got issues. I like this cartoon because he never wins.
But what's more flattering? You live in a world that actively screws you at every turn, or one that just doesn't care about you? Like a neat skin void. Um, I don't really know. Back to the top.